Well, welcome back. You are listening to What's the Story, and this is our Business Spotlight segment. Uh, love this segment. We started this um, after the pandemic with the thought that those businesses that are looking to get exposure would be able to come on and share their stories. We're all about the story and um, this is a great time to make sure people know you're still there, you're hanging in, or maybe you're starting up or whatever it might be, whatever your story is, we want to share it. Today we have two awesome gentlemen um, and they are part of a world-class team from Nevada, which is a Nevada company. And Christopher Paris was with us um, in a past show. He's the co-founder and president. And today we also have Mark Aston, who's joining us, and he's the co-founder. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right. So let's get right into the interview because these things go so quickly and I want to have our audience understand a lot about what you guys do and and a little bit about the company. So Chris, uh, I'd love it if you'd start out since, you know, you were you were the one of the co-founders and you're the president. So give us a little bit of a rundown on this. Sure. So Navaca is a company that uh, helps electrical contractors streamline their purchasing processes. Uh, really, it's a tool. Uh, people talk about an end-to-end -end connectivity tool. This really, truly is a tool that the field workers can use to initiate uh, and track purchase orders and uh, and improves the productivity for the electrical contractor and the, di and the distributor. And it's a pretty uh, novel approach to this, correct? Yeah, it's an interesting approach, and that's what we're finding a lot of the manufacturers and ERP systems uh, software companies we're talking to, they say they've, they've not seen a unique uh, approach to solving the problem uh, like ours. Which is wonderful. So, um, Mark, welcome to What's the Story. And uh, tell us a little bit about how you got involved in this project. Well, I spent 35 years in uh, L.A. I'm an import from England, and I started a number of companies in the construction industry, mostly distribution, some manufacturing, uh, mostly global or international. I had a couple of winners, retired, moved to Reno uh, with my wife and was enjoying the good life. And then I started mentoring for an accelerator here called Startup NV, which is run by a good friend of mine, Jeff Sailing. He introduced me to Chris. I saw the app. I was looking for something like that five or six years ago before I retired. And I thought this was really awesome. Uh, key, key among uh, the reasons being that it gives a remote worker more control over his purchase orders. And many people who place orders from the field, they scribble it on a piece of cardboard or a piece of paper. Now they have an app to send an image and the real name that the manufacturer uses, and it just eliminates confusion, uh, less meetings. Uh, so I moved uh, into uh, the company with Chris. I'm a full partner with him now, and he was generous enough to make me a co-founder. Wow, that's pretty phenomenal. Go Did ahead. you gentlemen happen to present at One Million Cups before? No, no, we did not. We certainly would be prepared to at some point, but we have not. Right. Not when they time. get up and going, I was, mm -hmm. um, uh, seems like I've heard of a company writing con in construction or at least, you know, I know you got so many different databases and so many different parts. I don't pretend to understand your space, but I know that you have competition, right? Folks are actively pursuing it pretty aggressively. Well, there are always competitors, and uh, there are competitors with apps in just about every field of construction. But most of these so-called end-to-end apps go from the office to the manufacturer. We're actually going from the field to the office. We're not trying to compete with anybody else. We're trying to fill a niche that hasn't been filled yet. So it's a very tiny niche, but it seems to be very important. A lot of contractors and other companies have said, we have a purchasing app, and then they see ours, and they say, well, we haven't got that. And so that's <laughs> awesome. That's killer. That's why we're, we're growing, and I'm, I'm, very comf I'm very confident with, uh, with how we're doing this, and Chris is the man. He's really uh, surprised me with the terrific app that he put together. He brought in a partner to code the iOS for the Apple phone. He did the coding himself. He went into Google training school, and he's now an official Google coder. And he coded the Android model, and we're now bringing in some interns from UNR. We've had great help from uh, the UNR uh, hand, uh, HR uh, resources department with their uh, Handshake app. And uh, so we're building out our development team. I'm very excited with how this is going. 
Wow, it's really grown a lot since we talked to you last, Chris. Yeah, yeah, it really has. <laughs> it's it's really unbelievable the attention that we're getting from people now. I mean, so literally some of the biggest names in the industry are are talking to us right now. And was that as a result of um, what you did with that startup group? Startup NV, yeah. So that's where Mark came from. Initially, Startup NV assigned Mark as a mentor because you get a mentor and a coach through the program. And, uh, and Mark, you know, he's also a committee member. And uh, so, but he was, he was so interested in what we were doing, or what I was doing that we just kind of, you know, really meshed and started working really well together. That's, that's just wonderful. I mean, I, I had told you when you came on the first time that I really wanted you to stay in touch and you did a good job. Um, Chris was, was very proactive in getting back on the show, and I appreciate that, Chris, because sometimes we lose our guests because um, I lose track. So good for you for uh, kind of hounding me a bit, and that was great. Um, I also want to mention that, that when you talk about this, you're also talking about reducing costs for what you're doing, correct? Yep, it's going to reduce, it's going to reduce cost. It's going to reduce hard costs, and it's going to reduce the intangible costs that not a lot of contractors track, uh, such as project delays that are caused by an incorrect material delivery. Those aren't things that are typically tracked. But we're not just talking about electrical contractors either. We're talking about construction. We're talking about uh, implications for healthcare, automotive, uh, manufacturing, utility. Uh, of course, we're just focused on contracting right now, but there's huge potential anywhere there's a remote worker initiating uh, or anybody who needs parts for that matter. And you also have some beta testing that you're looking to do. Talk about that a little bit. Either one of you, Mark, I, I don't know, maybe you want to talk about that? Well, Chris is really uh, better geared to... Oh, uh, all right, uh, fine. Fire away. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, yeah, we're, we are actively seeking electrical contractors uh, as beta testers. We have a functioning product, and we're seeking uh, partners to help us develop the product further and test it in the field. Uh, although we have designed this application not in a vacuum, but through functional testing with other contractors and distributors. Uh, but we're looking to do some more formal beta testing, get some feedback from, from people. Uh, of course, there's there's a rewards type of program, uh, as well as the, the productivity increases that you see by being on the front, in the, in the front of technology in the industry. And how does someone go about um, getting involved in the beta testing? You can go to our website at www.navaka.com. That's N-E-V-A-K-A. -A. We're also on social media, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we have a we have a beta test sign up form. If you fill out that form and and submit it, we'll we'll, we'll reach right back out to you and and see what we can do together. As far as um, interns working with you, are you still having that happen, or is that something that's available if somebody was interested, or is that kind of done and you've moved on? No, absolutely. Uh, interns, uh, there are a number of uh, uh, very well-qualified students at UNR, whether they're graduate students or undergraduate in computer studies. We've selected a couple that we'd like to have work with us right now. We're just going through the paperwork so they can effectively start with us July 1. Uh, we just put out another application for a UX or user experience uh, student who can help us with the front end or the visuals of the app. So uh, I've been very impressed with UNR and how they responded to us uh, through the media and through their app and uh, helped find these very good candidates for us. So we hope that uh, once we go to uh, revenue and uh, we actually have a working app that customers are using and paying for, that we'll be able to go back to these same interns and bring them on full time and give them a career with Nevada. That's what we're hoping can happen. What a great opportunity. And Chris, what an awesome story that um, how you started and, and you just decided to develop this app and where you've, where you've gone from there. What would you tell somebody that, that's thinking about doing something maybe on the fence and how would you advise them? Uh. I don't know if I would advise somebody to start a company. <laughs> I would. Uh, it's definitely satisfying. Um, 
because you know the reward i think is is great um but it's very difficult uh when it comes to the development and the sales and marketing when you're talking about protecting the company properly um, it costs a lot of money uh, and it costs a lot of time and you you should be prepared to sacrifice weekends and nights i think that is about the best advice i can hear from somebody that's that's become an entrepreneur because as an entrepreneur you do have to be willing to sacrifice a lot and i think sometimes people don't realize that when they go in what would you say to that mark well if you believe in yourself uh, keep on getting up and trying again i've started eight different companies uh, four of them were about break even two of them i had my head handed to me and <laughs> Two of them were very successful, and that's why I'm sitting where I am and uh, have been able to help Chris and join him. So keep on trying, you know, never give up. Never let anyone tell you you can't do it if you believe you can. That's great advice. Well, you guys, I really appreciate you being on What's the Story and sharing your story. I think it's incredible, and, and Chris, it was great to meet you originally, and I'm glad you came back on. And I hope you'll continue to share your successes with us. Of course. I'll be happy to. Thank you so much for having us on your show. It's been a delight for us, too. How wonderful stuff, you gentlemen. Yeah, thanks, Mark. I appreciate it. Nice to meet you as well. And you are listening to What's the Story, and that's just one company story. You probably got one, too, so share it with us. We'll be right back.